When you're building a new gaming PC or upgrading the one you've got, you're generally looking for the best value for money. This can be pretty hard on the new market where if you have say a budget of £500 to build a new gaming PC, you're going to struggle to find anything other than say an AMD APU and maybe squeeze an SSD in there. On the used market though, for a budget of just £200, you can actually get a pretty impressive gaming PC as I'm going to be showing you in two weeks time with a build guide of a sub £200 gaming PC. This video though is all about giving you some tips and things to look out for to be able to get the best tech possible on the used market. I've also recruited a seasoned used tech buyer whose channel you can find in the description down below along with a video up in the cards whichever side they are for a actually pretty impressive video of him tearing down a 780 Ti to show you how much performance you can get from just cleaning old GPUs and how to do that as well. So the first thing to look out for here is the fakes and the scams. Now the scams are pretty easy to spot. These are normally, especially on the graphics card side of things, uh, graphics cards that are incredibly high-end cards that are normally selling for hundreds if not thousands of pounds, something like an RTX 2080 Ti for example, uh, that is being sold for a ridiculously small amount of money, something like £48 with a buy it now auction on eBay. These are normally uh, either completely fake and you won't get any money or you will get you know, a box with a brick in it or something like that, but you will not get a function graphics card and there is no point in throwing any money towards these people uh, it's just genuinely not worth it and you have to rely on buyer protections from people like eBay or PayPal to be able to get your money back there. On the fake side of things this is pretty interesting now the ones that I found first were the GTX 970s and it is generally a few older generation cards that you'll see this with but essentially the listings that you'll see are ones where they claim a brand new GTX 970 with what looks like a very unbranded OEM style cooler so it's not you know an Asus or an MSI or a Zotac or whatever else uh, brand card it is completely unbranded and it's often being sold at cheaper than even the used market is currently selling for those cards so for example the uh, 970s were selling for I think 100 to 150 pounds used whereas these cards are being sold for something like 98 pounds new so uh, keep that in mind uh, and I would mention the the reason these are you know kind of problem cards are that um, they are generally fakes so they're generally uh, even you know you will get a card you'll probably get a card that has a box that says 970 on it and even when you plug the card in it might actually report as a 970 but the, the main problem with this is that they're normally either lower end or much older cards that have been modified to report as the newer generation cards, so something like a 970, rather than what they actually are. And so when you buy this, you're buying effectively a much lower spec card and will not perform as you expect it to in games. Next up, on the more tips side of things, when searching for parts, especially if you're buying a full system that you're planning to then add parts to later, make sure that you buy compatible parts parts. The Dell system that I bought for my build guide, as you'll see, as I said, in two weeks time, uh, has DDR3 RAM, but some older models may actually use DDR2, and so it's important to make sure you work out which model of system you're buying. If you're not buying a system, this doesn't necessarily apply, but it still does apply in that you already have a system that you're upgrading, so you need to make sure that you're buying compatible parts. Another thing to mention is actually if you are buying those older type systems and you're planning on say adding an SSD to make the PC a good bit faster, make sure that the actual system either has SATA ports available because older systems actually didn't have SATA ports or may have only had one or two for the included drive and DVD drive. Uh, so make sure that you buy compatible stuff there too. Power supplies are also a massive thing that a lot of people forget about. If you're buying a used system, especially something like that Dell system, they likely have fairly limited power supplies in them. They likely don't have much capacity extra for graphics cards, and if they do, they often don't have the connectors necessary to power graphics cards, which are one of the biggest power draws, especially when you're adding older ones into old systems. When it comes to power supplies, they're also not all made equal. So even if the power supply that comes in your system, or even the one that you've had for a number of years already is say a 500 watt unit, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually any good or rated to run at 500 watts anymore, as they do often degrade over time. 
Make sure that when you are buying a new system or you know going for a used one or upgrading, that the power supply A has the connectors you need and B is actually suitable to run the stuff that you want to run with it. And a final note on power supplies, if you are buying those used um, sort of Dell PC type things, uh, office PCs, they actually often used proprietary power supplies with proprietary connectors on them. So you may not even be able to upgrade those if you went with one of those systems and then tried to upgrade it down the line. So do keep that in mind. For making the most of your money, there's a few different ways you can go about this. There's a couple of tips and tricks here. So the first one is that DDR3 RAM is actually about half the price of DDR4 at the time of filming, thanks to the surplus of it and the fact that it's not you know, the highest end or the, the newest available. So if you are planning on buying a system, if you deliberately go for one that supports DDR3 RAM as opposed to say the older DDR2 or the newer DDR4, while you will sacrifice upgradability, you will often get better capacities than your the, the, the newer counterparts for less money. You could also go about acquiring the stuff that you're after in different ways as well. For example, sticking on the RAM front, if you did want to upgrade and add some RAM to your current system, you could either one, go out and buy some RAM directly, or two, you could go out and buy a used PC like the, the Dell system that I bought that has four or eight gigs of RAM in it already buy the system for 50 or 60 pounds, take the RAM out and then sell the system on. Depending on how much you can make from selling the system on, obviously without RAM and therefore not functioning, uh, you can make a bit more money back from that and therefore you know, save some money effectively on buying RAM as well. And finally, don't forget about postage costs. Well, it's all well and good someone like me making videos about budget builds can you know, kind of slide those costs to the side and just swallow them away as you know, video expenses. For you, if you have a set amount of money, you, know, you only have two or 300 pounds to spend on a gaming PC and you need one right now, don't forget about postage costs. It can be a pretty big deal for especially some of the used systems, for example. And even if you are planning on, say, selling items, don't forget about A, the cost that it's gonna you know, cost you to post it, and B, also things like eBay seller fees as well, as that will impact how much money you end up with you know, at the end of your, uh, your kind of adventure. Now, remember I mentioned my seasoned tech buyer? Well, he's here to give you a few extra tips as well, so I'll pass it over to him. Hey folks, Richard here from the F7 YouTube channel. The main two things that I always ask myself when building a new system is firstly, what do I want to use it for? And secondly, when do I actually want to build it? Having a clear end goal in mind can help narrow your focus. I'm sure all of us would love the latest and greatest CPU and the fastest graphics cards available, but really, you've got to ask yourself, do you actually need it? And would you use it if you had it? And that's where older systems can come in a treat. Prior to Intel's Skylake platform, older platforms used DDR3 memory, and if the games and settings you want to play won't see any benefit from a 6 or 8 core CPU, you're going to be able to use the likes of a Ivy Bridge or Sandy Bridge i5 or i7 CPU, which can still cut it in many games today, or if you want something newer, a Haswell based Socket 1150 CPU, where you can still pick up a good value but still fairly recent quad core CPU like the i5 4590, a CPU that I used extensively at the start of the channel, and it was the mainstay CPU in my system until I switched over to Ryzen in 2017. On the used market at the moment, using a platform with DDR3 memory will allow you to get about 16 gigs of DDR3 for roughly the same kind of price as you're paying for 8 gigabytes of DDR4. The downside is obviously you're going to be limited with your upgrade options, as you won't be able to say plonk a 2018 Coffee Lake processor into that same motherboard down the line, but as a cost to performance option, the older Intel i5 and i7 CPUs can make a compelling case for any budget build. If you're looking to game on a budget at 1080p resolutions, you also don't really need the latest offerings from Intel or AMD to have a good experience. Cards like the GTX 960 are still competent cards especially if you manage to pick one of the versions up with the larger amounts of VRAM. Saying that though, the best deals will likely come from AMD at this point in time rather than Nvidia. Nvidia, it's the popular go-to choice for many people and everyone knows that, and their use price often reflects that fact and you end up paying a little bit more simply for the name, despite cards from AMD offering the same kind of levels of performance. So when building on a tight budget, buying smart is important. At the moment, and thanks to the recent cryptocurrency mining crash, a lot of used but relatively new cards from both AMD and Nvidia have flooded the used market, pushing prices down. Take this RX 580 for example. It was 6 months old, boxed, 
with receipts and it's still in warranty, but I managed to pick it up for £110 on an eBay auction. And that kind of leads nicely into the main piece of advice I could give to you. Timing. Planning a build and knowing what you want before you get into a bidding war is something that is going to be key if you want to get most for your money. And I've always found that you get the best deals when you're simply not desperate for something. Like the RX 580 I mentioned for just over £100, I knew there were deals out there. And despite some pretty good cards cropping up, I knew that I wasn't going to spend any more than £110 for a boxed 580. So my buying criteria had been set, and I simply waited. Sure, I lost a good few auctions in the process, but with patience, I eventually landed one. You wanted to get the most value for yourself from a purchase, so setting yourself a realistic, well-researched target cost and simply sticking to it is going to help you keep costs down and keep them from spiralling out of control. If the selling cost of a component is higher than what you value it as, simply look elsewhere, as the best used buy is the one where buyers and sellers are aligned. You've got to remember that on the used market there's no set price for components, and it's more of a potential range. Another example is a GTX 1070 that I bought last year, and I won it for £185. The seller listed the card on eBay with a short listing time, and wanted to get it sold quickly. I didn't really need the card, but figured that at under £200, it would still offer value to me. The seller and I agreed a price that we were both happy with, and the deal was done. Both parties left happy. Now, a few weeks later, I listed that exact same card again on eBay, and it sold at auction for £240. When I asked the buyer what he was using it for, he told me that he really wanted that particular GTX 1070 for a multi-card setup. The same card two different buyers, and two different values placed on it. A 25% range for exactly the same component, but the buyer I sold it to obviously valued it a lot higher than I did when I purchased it, and was willing to pay accordingly. If you want the best value, figure out what you need and simply stick to it. Is it the most performance for your money, or do you care about looks and brands more? Having a clear game plan, and not finding yourself in a bidding war to get components quickly, will help to keep potential building costs down. If you've never used something like eBay before, the prospect might be a little bit daunting, but eBay's buyer protection is pretty much rock solid at this point. Selling can be a little bit more risky, but I've only been stung once. But even with that, the money that I paid was returned to my PayPal account within the week. So the only real cost to me was the inconvenience of posting the card back to the original seller. Once you've got your used parts in hand though, and as tempting as it might be to simply get about building, when dealing with used parts, it's always best to take your time and clean everything up first. This is especially true with graphics cards, which tend to get clogged up with dust and have the thermal paste dry out a lot quicker than with your CPU. Some key cleaning items I would recommend would be these. Firstly, an electric duster, which can be used on pretty much every component in your system. Isopropyl alcohol wipes, the higher percentage the better, but anything above 70 will work fine. And replacement thermal compound. Arctix MX2 is my go-to, as it's cheap, comes in big tubes, and even though it's by no means the best, it is better than stock. And most importantly, it's not electrically conductive, and it has no curing time, which means it's safe to use on both your CPU and your graphics card. So I hope this video has been useful for you in getting the best bang for buck when it comes to the used tech market. If you've got any questions, leave those in the comments down below. And if you are a seasoned tech buyer, I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. If you've got anything else that you think we could add to this list, I'll do my best to pin them or heart them to make sure they float to the top so that everyone can see them. Otherwise, make sure you're subscribed to myself and F7. Of course, I've got a full series on the budget tech side of things. So this was the buyer's guide. Next Monday, we're doing a seller's guide. And then the Monday after that is the build guide with the £200 gaming PC. F7 is also doing some awesome videos. As I mentioned, the 780 Ti cleaning and sort of benchmarking video uh, will be out at the same time as this one. So make sure you go check that out. I'll leave that in a card. I'll try and leave it on the end cards as well. And of course, in the description down below too. And otherwise, that's kind of it. If you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday basis, with live streams on Thursday nights, then make sure you check out the links in the description down below. There's plenty down there. There's Amazon, Overclocks UK, uh, affiliate links, which don't cost you anything. You just have to click on them before you buy stuff and it massively helps me out. You can also use the Patreon link if you want to support me directly and get awesome rewards of doing so, or check out merch uh, for hoodies and t-shirts and a load of other stuff. There's also private internet access. There's a great and cheap VPN and Humble Bundle for cheap games too. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So check out the other videos over there. Make sure you subscribe for more videos like this 
this one and otherwise we'll see you all in the next video.